Hey, I'm Chance, and welcome to learning how I made this. Hi, I'm Chance, and we're back with another game table adventure. So, I play War Machines. I used to play Warhammer 40k. I, I can't afford to pay Games Workshop prices, though. It's just... That is what it is. But, with that, I've been building terrain and little things for D&D for... Uh, about a year now and I've enjoyed it so much and a lot of the people I watch that uh, I thought I'd take a crack at showing what I've learned and what I've been working on okay so what I'm planning to make here is an old kind of brick church building. Uh, my girlfriend bought me a foam cutter, foam wire cutter. Here's my little cutting board. I used to cut that up. But, what the hell is my ruler? Oh, damn. Thank you, honey. You're Not that this is a tutorial, because that's for uh, more polished work. But. This is what I like to think of as an experiment. See if anybody likes what I make. Now, this is going to be the base for my building, so I want to kind of slope the edge. I'm going to flock it later need the sharper edge of my craft knife and I'm not making it I'm not worrying about making it measured or anything just kind of getting it to look kind of random Kind of following a Bob Ross philosophy here. There are no accidents, just happy, or no mistakes, just happy accidents. Oh, I think that was the term. Fuck, fuck if I know. Now, Yeah, that looks good. War, War Machine and Hordes, well now they're the same game with Mark III, has a slightly, I don't want to say cartoony, but more steampunk aesthetic. <laughs> if you look at armies like my roommate plays, uh, the Grimkin, I like to think they don't take themselves entirely too seriously. Now, my bricks are not perfectly cut. 
Uh, I thought about... I, I didn't decide to film this until I had already started collecting the pieces and materials for my build. But these bricks are going to be the basis for my building. And... into my craft box of doom there's not a lot of doom in there just a lot of really cool shit like UV cure resin also a gift from my girlfriend she's wonderful look, look at how wonderful she <laughs> no baby I want to show them how wonderful you are <laughs> no. I love you I love you I will run <laughs> I like to have it for scale now the great thing about War Machines is it uses a series of base sizes rather than fucking um, millimeters or, well, they have sizes, like written sizes, and I don't remember what the sizes are. But the great thing about War Machines is they come in small which is something I'm going to work with. Medium. Which a lot of my shit's medium. Large. And gargantuan. Which I have no examples of. Is it aimed at... Is it aimed at the stuff... Can you help me? Oh. That wasn't aimed. Oh, that way. Okay. As you can see here, I have my three sizes of mini. Now, I'm going to make this a ruined building with two levels on it, hopefully. I'm not really worried about large size, ba uh, large base size getting inside, but I want to make sure that small and medium, so your basic infantry and the base size for heavy infantry or light war jacks or light war beasts to be able to get inside. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with my medium base size creature open up my bag of bricks and what the fuck my glue is not coming out bother just open it up use one of my off cuts dip that in there ah try to break my vape because that's always a great choice and I'm just gonna stick a brick down just a little off to the side of the base. Now, the cool thing is, uh, this is XPS foam. Uh, usually, people buy it from like a hardware store or something like that. I happen to have an interesting hookup. Friends of mine work at a factory where this is used to pack engines for forklifts and this is thrown away daily thrown away just thrown the fuck away I am building a piece of terrain out of garbage think about how cool that is so I am 
getting use out of something that would otherwise just not be used. And they let my buddy Josh, you guys all know Josh, used to be the editor and now is just does a lot of my our taste test videos. Since I've learned to edit for myself. Bwahaha. And I'm just going to start breaking around. So, you know, get a little bit... Is, is the camera on my hands, honey? It's on your hands, but you can't see like that. So I'm just spreading some glue on the brick. On the bottom and on the side. And I'll just put it down there. Huh? I'm gonna get you tack glue. What? I'm gonna get you tack glue. Tack glue? Yeah. Uh, EVA works just fine, baby. Um, it dries faster, so you can do a lot. Yeah, but this, uh, faster. the great thing about, uh, EVA, or, uh, not EVA foam, fuck. Uh, the great thing about Elmer's glue, mm -hmm. dries clear. Yeah. So and it shrinks up. So does tack glue. Oh. Oh, you mean like the tacky glue? That's that's the so, that's the same glue, just thicker. So you know, I, I would I'd appreciate some tacky glue, but it's I don't no Fine. I Fine. Fine. I love you. <laughs> I know, baby. <laughs> but as you can see, I'm just kind of breaking around here, and I'm not gonna film the entire process of. Uh, breaking this up just because I don't want this video to stretch on forever and bore everybody. And I have some cool doodads I'm going to put on this building like religious symbols. Uh, they don't use they don't use crosses. Well, they they use like they use a menifix in Iron Kingdoms. It's kind of like a crucifix, but uh, the Mennonites or uh, the Menothians or whatever the hell you'd call them—they don't really have a Jesus figure. Uh, also, they they tie people to the Menifix and then they burn it. So it's kind of like getting crucified and burned at the stake. It's kind of horrific. Kind of glad they're not a really active faction anymore. Less religious weirdos, the better. <laughs> Those of you who have been watching my channel for a while, and there are a few of you. 51 subscribers and counting. Which is far more than I ever thought I'd get. I thought this would just be a channel for friends and family to watch. Uh, for me to, for people to keep up with what I'm doing. Because I live so far away from a lot of my friends and family, but uh, I've started to get a following. What are you getting irritated about, baby? Because it's All right, yeah, yeah. You guys actually want to see me slather the brick? What, baby? It's just, it's it's now look how the line is kind of crooked, but we can we can fix that because the glue dries so slowly, I can just kind of straighten it out. Now, in a lot of medieval buildings, uh, they would use two kind. Uh, there would be facing stones. Stones that face the outside. And then there would be um, facing stones on the inside of the wall, which were not nearly as flat, but were kept straight ish and then there would be fill stones now funny thing about medieval castles is some of them most of them still have wet mortar inside those big walls it never dries well it, it theoretically it will or could dry but even thousands of years from now right now and it could still take thousands of years for those castle walls to completely dry now, I'm using much bigger bricks than you would see in, uh, 
like a Tudor era kind of construction and I want to get to where I can make those kinds of bricks um, I have psoriatic arthritis and osteoarthritis so my hands are not always the steadiest thing but I enjoy crafting and modeling and building and this is how I spend a lot of my time since it's the medications I take um, I have to have state insurance for because it costs thousands of dollars to keep me mobile and able to move but if I work or were to have a job and a little bit of self dignity I would lose my medical insurance and thus my ability to be any kind of a productive member of society so here we are And I'm just going to go around. Nice and fairly straight wall here. We are the champions, my friends. Do do do. We'll keep on fighting till the end. Oh, I'll keep on crying until it ends. I love you. <laughs> Sorry. I'm talking about school. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, so. And, um. I'm going to keep bricking around this, but I'm not going to video the whole thing, so. Well, here we are, and we're a little further along in the project, as you can see. I am on row four. Oh, God damn it. See, and there you can, I don't edit out my clumsiness, so enjoy that have a good laugh um, as you can see I did not leave myself any chunks long enough for making the tops of the windows or the tops of the uh, uh, doorway so we're gonna have that to contend with but as you can see medium-sized base guy can come in here just fine moves around just fine small base and the window is at a nice convenient shooting height you can see right there bang all right now the way that I made the top of the window was literally just by fucking gluing some of them together, about three or four, and then putting them above the window. Wanted to get this recorded at several points in the build. And I, uh... been a while so a lot of this has had a chance to dry as I've been doing it you know PVA glue dries pretty good and kind of smooth it down and it's 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 really a lot like building an actual brick structure because you know you've got the glue for mortar and I'm just slather that on and then Boom. Honey, honey, can you check the viewfinder, make sure everything I'm doing is actually in focus? Excuse me, excuse me. No, get you down. Excuse me. 
I just figured I'd ask since you're not doing anything at the moment. It's hard to film and uh, work, and believe it or not, the reason I've been, part of why I've been cutting away is because uh, I feel like the video would be boring for you guys to just sit there and watch me plank down probably, we're at probably a couple hundred bricks at this point, or more, fuck if I know. But uh, I'm I'm experimenting. I'm learning here as much as anything, and I figured, hey, my learning adventure would be fun to share with people on YouTube because I have literally nothing better to do, you know. And part of what this channel is is me sharing. What I like to do with the world, you know, the 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 places I go, the things I do. What about this brick? This brick looks a little better. You know, the foods I eat. And especially the games I play. We'll just turn this so that... And as far as my uh, Signar Army and my love of War Machine, uh, keep an eye out for that video because that's... that's coming. I'll tell you what. That is... That is a video that is happening. Uh, my, my army now is very small. When I lost everything, I had to start over with my life. As, as it happens, some people do. Um, I lost my army, which was much larger. And this is what I have built to replace it. So, now, now we come to what I like to call building the bigger piece. So we're gonna, we're gonna start with that cube, and we're gonna stack this one kind of like that on it. Makes a nice, smooth surface. And it's hard for me to tell what what I'm getting in the range for you guys to see. Dollop the glue, apply the brick, and I want to keep these as straight as possible. Uh, now some of you people are probably wondering, well, why doesn't he do a time lapse? Well, there's a simple answer to that. I don't know how. Not... Not super great with the editing technology. That's why for the longest time Josh had to do the editing. And why videos took so long to get out. Now that's mostly flat. And we'll go ahead and let that dry. Or cure up. And, you know, we'll see how that does here in a few minutes.
Okay. There we are. So, set my tripod up. And here we are again. This is actually, it's not dry, but it is stuck together well enough that I can actually kind of slap this together. It's alright. What's wrong, honey? Huh? Who's on the phone? Oh, okay. She's gonna be going live at 8.30 Anyways, as you can see, I, I put that at the top of the window. It's probably not how you build an actual window. I know there's a there's like a bigger piece that you put at the top of a window or a doorway. Uh So, uh, bear with me while I kind of fudge my way through this. We'll just go ahead and drip a little more glue on it to strengthen it up. Kind of just smear that over the top. And here we are, just slathering up another brick. And we'll come back to it here in a minute and uh, see how far I've gotten before the next time I, I check in. So we'll go ahead and... And we're back again. Um, this has got to dry overnight, so guess this stage of the project is going to be a little crazy. Um, shit, I did not realize there was that much fucking glue that leaked down. God damn it. Well, this stuff dries clear and it dries hard, so hopefully we've got this. But, you know, um, the next step, I think what I'm going to do is, uh, like I said, I'm just kind of feeling my way through it. I'm going to put some kind of support beam here to make sure that these walls hold up nice. And uh, I think I'm going to leave this roofless and just leave it crumbled looking. Uh, I'm going to probably, uh, I want to do an altar inside that looks all fucking cool and witchy. I don't know. Uh, that's a thing. But, uh, look. Look how well this door works. Is, is the door in, is the door in frame, honey? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm good? Okay. And see, you can put a medium base jack or creature into it, no problem. Even the hunter, which is kind of 
weirdly shaped with its axe and its cannon. Or a uh, little trencher infantryman. And shoot out the windows. So it's it's good. I like having the oh, tall fucking building profile. Um, it's gonna be cool. I'm gonna use some of these symbols, uh, like stars. Kind of, kind of. I'm gonna put one like right here, and probably one on the altar because yeah, I got those at Dollar Tree. So they were like a buck twenty-five, because you know, God forbid the name and uh, the price line up. <coughs> but uh, this is this stage in the build, and uh, I don't know. I guess we will pick it up tomorrow. Hey everybody, I'm back. Hopefully this weird camera angle will give you an idea or make it so you can see what I'm doing. Back again. Well, all right. I keep saying we're back. For you, it's just momentary jump cuts, I guess. By the way, I don't know how to do voiceovers, so uh yeah, and enjoy any verbal flubs. Uh hey, what the fuck? Kitten. Okay, I've got this. That's cool. What we're going to do is we're going to cut this up and use it to make uh, timbered boards. This is essentially pizza box or, uh, well, I guess you'd call it cereal box. I eat more frozen pizzas than I do cereal. What a shocker. I'm not a big cereal guy. That we can just chuck. Hey, kitty kitty. Now, a lot of people would cut these. I want to get rid of that kind of creased section where the box corner used to be. A lot of people would cut these with a straight edge and a razor. Why am I using scissors? Well, I don't want straight, perfect edges. I want this to look like rough hewn boards. So. Ow. 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 Enough. Kittens, am I right? But first things first, gotta get rid of these. Ow, fuck! I've got a kitten attacking the back of my arm. Just off camera. Oh. Okay, little shit. Alright, cool. So, as you can see, we've gotten rid of all the bad, uh, bad bits. Now I'm just going to start by cutting, I don't know, quarter inch to like eighth inch fucking strips off. Not being very precise, I don't have measured out or marked off. I'm not setting them on the... No, I'm, I'm not guiding anything. I'm just fucking... Uh, yeah, that looks about right. 
and I start cutting. Now I'm not letting my hand wander all over the place, obviously, but... I'm just kind of getting at it. I find crafting to be relaxing. One of those things that you can do to kind of de-stress. Okay. We have our strips of fucking cereal box. Or pizza box, whatever you want to call it. Ow. Now to start putting it in. So we're going to kind of measure it. get that rough hewn floor in there so kitten that desperately needs entertained. But no, as you can see, we're uh, measuring them out. Get them all about right. I'm probably going to have to uh, fiddle with them a little bit to get them to fit because building's not a perfect square as you can see yeah but that should be enough to get us started glue I need a fair bit of it so what we're gonna do is time-tested method of pour some out on a plastic sheet in this case a Ziploc baggie Grab something to smear it with. In this case, an off cut of foam board.
That's some glue in there. We're just going to set these in here like this. Now you've probably noticed, let's get this last board in there, and there is a thin gap between the edge of the board and the wall. We see it right here, right there. Now that was not intentional, but it won't matter. And you're probably wondering, okay, well why won't that matter? Because I'm going to be lining the inside of the walls with boards. So it's going to kind of add up. So I'm going to go ahead and keep going here, and we'll check back in a little bit. Okay, here we are at the next step, and I skipped ahead a little bit. I had to weigh it down with some things. I've got my uh, boards that are in the walls put in. And it looks a little more decrepit. And I've got the floorboards added. It takes, um, so the bricks end up really uneven with the chunky bricks that I made. You could probably build a clean version of this and it would look pretty sick. Um, hey! Get off of that cord, you furry little shit. <laughs> Um, fucking, it, it looks pretty good. Um, I will go ahead and, uh, go on with the next step. But first, what we're going to do is we're going to clean up some of the glue that over, that over spilled the bricks here a little bit. And that's just as easy as... Take your blade and kind of scrape it and see when you run into a spot where it's going to detach a brick. Ow! Fuck! Fucking cat! So you'll want to go through and clean up a lot of these overspills. Now, they won't be as noticeable when you go to paint it. And if you haven't done your corrective work by then, to really kind of recarve this out, you're probably not going to. I am by no means a master crafter, and I probably never will be. Uh, this is definitely amateur hour. Uh, my, my brickwork looks like shit. Um, but because it's a dilapidated building, and it's kind of off-angled, most of the shit I make is ruined. 
It's it's fucked up. It's supposed to look like it's barely standing. This definitely qualifies. Mm. God, I love apple wine. Anyways. That's the steps so far. So let me go through and do a little more and we'll come back to this. Okay. And like that, I've finished up the inside. It's not great. Um, this isn't the best work I've done yet, but it uh, looks pretty cool. Now, to add a bit of stability and the right look, First of all, I'm going to swap plas er, uh, glue caps, because one pours and one doesn't, and I'm not cleaning out and fixing another tip, especially when I'm just using the same glue. I have used up literally an entire glue bottle on this project. I've got this. This is going to be an internal support pillar. Get a nice piece to cover it. Like I said, I'm just doing little fiddly bits. here and there and see I can still stick my hands inside and it gives that rafter like appearance that uh, you see on old buildings now check this out this is where I put the uh, star on the front of the building. Wanted to give the impression of a pinnacle or, you know, something in that vein. And we'll go ahead and put a little more glue on that. Back. And then what we'll do is we'll lay a bead of glue right here across the top. Nothing fancy, no need to... Now keep in mind, I'm not as good as some of the other builders out there. And my terrain pieces, I'm just starting out in this hobby. Well, alright, I've been doing it for a year, but... Compared to a lot of the people that I watch, uh, I am a novice at best. So, here we go. Next up, it'll be time to seal it. Now, I've watched a lot of the crafters on here. I'm going to spray paint this. But what I've got here is a mixture of gray paint, Elmer's glue, and a little water. And this is supposed to make a nice protective coating over this so that the foam doesn't melt when I hit it with the spray paint. And I think that'll finish it for this step. If you're building one of these along with me in this video, uh, first of all, I'd love to see pictures, especially if yours looks better than mine. Uh, and second of all, um, please leave a comment down below if, if you really liked this. Like, comment, subscribe, and share the video if you have anybody in your friends group that would be interested or family. It's not sitting as flat as I would like. 
But yeah, stay tuned for more. Okay, and here we are. This piece is finally dry. We can just kind of rip some of these glue runs off. Good fingernail. Now we're going to take this mixture I made, again, this is glue, paint, and a little water, and we're going to seal this motherfucker up so that I can spray paint it because I'm lazy. <clears throat> there we go. And we just want to get a good coating on this thing so that spray paint won't melt the foam. So I want to try to get it everywhere and I'm just going to kind of dollop this on. I don't have any of the fancy texturing materials like a lot of those other terrain makers because I don't get out much and... I can't think of any place that I could go get sand readily. As soon as I think of something, I will probably gather sand. Maybe from Lake Milton? I don't know. It's one of the closer lakes to where I live. It's raining today, so I can't spray paint anyways. So this will have plenty of time to dry. Now I would have used a mixture of Mod Podge and fucking paint, but I don't have that kind of money so here we are I'm just slathering on a good coat.
Well, anyways, I'm going to keep coating this thing, and I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. So that's kind of what I'm doing here, so let's skip to the next step. Okay, so I finished the coat on the building, the first coat. As you can see, there's a lot of blue peeking out, especially if we flip it upside down and kind of take a look at it from different angles. But, now that it's one color, it looks a little better for the most part. So I'm going to slap another coat on this thing, and then we can spray paint it. Unfortunately, as you can see from the rocking, it warped a little bit. So I'm going to try to get a coat on the bottom, and uh, see if that fixes it. Okay, here I am. We're outside. Um, I'm feeling a little impatient, but what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and hit this with some spray paint. And I'm just going to keep my distance and hope that the protective coating I put on it is enough. That's a real quick light primer coat, and I think that'll do it for this. Here we go. So um, I've got the project right here and a brush, and it's primed up, and we're just going to start putting paint on it, one brick at a time. I know that sounds pretty monotonous, but as you can see, I'm going to do the bricks in a few different colors, a few different shades of gray, starting with a dark gray, uh, a sandy tan color, and a light gray. And you're probably asking yourself, well, why is he doing three, uh, two colors of gray and a sandy tan? Well, not all uh, stone is the same color <laughs> and I'm wanting to elevate the look of this piece uh, it's got so many I want to say even you could even call them awkward bricks on here they're just little cubes and I feel like I can Maybe make that work to my advantage as far as the look of this piece by doing a good paint job. Kind of make up for my shortfalls. As an artist, as a builder. 
And there's nothing wrong with that in the grand scheme of things. Now, you can't really see what I'm doing, per se, not very well anyways, but I've got this nail art brush, and I am just very carefully painting in the bricks one at a time. And I'm not being super particular about what brick. I'm just going in, pick a brick, and whatever color I'm on at the time is the color that brick will become. I'm going to paint this assembly line style like I would for a squad of minis. Or if I was painting a whole army. Just go with one color and hammer it out. I don't, this is the first color, so I don't need to be super careful. I can go kind of fast. But what I'm going for is just the best coverage I can get. And this darker gray is going to be a fairly dominant color on this piece so I am just picking big pieces of stone well big pieces of foam I guess but uh, those big pieces are gonna be this darker color And as you can see, I'm getting, I'm getting, I'm getting it pretty good. I'm not going sloppy. I'm not, I'm not rushing. I'm just going quickly. A little over, a little over the edge is okay. I don't want to go crazy or hog wild, but, uh. A little over brushing isn't going to kill anything. This isn't the biggest terrain piece I've made. And of course I will showcase the rest of my terrain pieces eventually. But this is the only one I've recorded the process for making. And this is my eighth piece. No, ninth. I know one kind of fell through though. You can do this. Oh, oops, little accident. No big deal. Move along. And there's nothing wrong with just taking your time. And we'll come back with the next color. Josh, could you kill it for me? Okay, here I am back and now we're starting on the tan bricks. Here, let me show you the color. 
Now I'm going very light with the tan color because I am gonna be hitting this with a wash. You can see all the dark bricks I've painted in, a dark gray. I haven't done anything with the wood yet. But I'm just taking my brush, getting a little bit of paint, pick a brick at random, and paint it. And you'll see slowly as this starts to emerge. And there's nothing wrong with the pop of color, especially in fantasy, especially in steampunk. Uh, you know, a lot of that shit is colorful. So you really want to emphasize that. There, I got a little bit of overpaint, but I can touch that up later. And I'm just doing what I did before with the last color. You can see I'm just kind of coloring it in, taking my time. There's no rush. This is very relaxing. I would say that this is actually probably one of my favorite parts of making something is doing the paint job. I don't have an airbrush. I don't have any of the fancy tools. Um, I don't know, I, I, I can't afford the paints for uh, all the washes and uh, shades and whatnot for fucking and contrast paints and shit, so it's not like I could do a Zenithal highlight or any of those fancy techniques. But I'm just taking some good old apple barrel, nice, cheap, good color, good coverage, and just painting it. Just get in there. I, I used to get so frozen up that I don't have the good paints or I don't have the fucking fancy skills or any of that shit. And now, one thing I've learned over the past couple of years is that it doesn't have to be perfect. It just has, you just have to be happy with it. And my skills are ever expanding ever growing I'm always learning new techniques and seeing new ways of doing things and learning how to become a better painter how to become a better crafter a better modeler and I have so many hobbies that involve painting and building I build miniatures for wargaming I sometimes I just build models just because I like to build miniatures of things. I think it's cool, so it, it doesn't really matter if anybody else likes or what I do as long as I like what I do. And that's part of what this YouTube channel is about, is me sharing my passions, my zest for life, with the world. And I enjoy making videos. Even if I don't have a large viewership or a lot of subscribers, even if nobody was really watching, I think I'd still make the videos. And I think that's what's important. 
is just enjoying what you do. For me, it's a way to record my memories. That way they're there forever. Preserved. Life has been pretty lonely since I stopped really being able to work. You don't get out much when you have a condition like mine. You don't go out as often. You don't have money to do things like you used to. But you have time for other passions. For me, those passions I have embraced have been gaming and building and painting and even working on cars when I get the chance to. Josh, can you come kill the camera for me? Alright, so here we are. I have done a few other colors. And I'm just continuing with this fiddly little brickwork to get the colors to come out. I thought it would be kind of boring for you guys to see the whole process, every color. All I went with was a variety of different natural stone colors and earth tones to make it look good. And as you can see, I'm just going in now and coloring in all the bricks with this muddy gray color that I didn't paint before. And after like five colors, I'm on the fifth color, so after four colors, there's not a lot of bricks left that need to be painted. But... I want to get full coverage on everything, and I uh, want to get this looking nice. And since this is such a subdued but pleasant color, and now keep in mind, a lot of these uh, colors are going to be dulled down with a black wash. So I'm not straying away from brighter earth tones. And a color can be both bright and an earth tone. It's not something that is necessarily exclusive. So, yes, I have some dark colors in here. Well, I have a dark color. But when this is all fucking washed... It'll look very earthy, very, very stone. I'm also going to apply all the washes before I add anything like, say, the antique copper I'm going to do on the star. Yeah. Antique copper. Kind of, kind of a signature color for me. Uh... I love antique copper. It is probably like my favorite metallic color. And any excuse to use it is welcome at my crafting table. I'll tell you what. 
This process goes a little faster than the other colors, and that's because it. I'm not trying to separate the bricks. I'm not trying to spread the color out evenly. What I'm doing is literally painting everything that wasn't covered before. So... Yeah, that's good coverage there. So I'll move over to the side. Stay tuned because, uh, well, we'll see more of the paint job. All right, so now it's time. We, we, we finished painting all of our bricks different colors and, and giving it an interesting look. Nice and cheerful. Now you don't you can paint all your stone pieces the same color. You don't have to do it like I'm doing it. I'm doing it like this because it just seemed amusing to me. Got annoying after a little while. But now I'm painting the wood. And you don't actually have to have the wood in here. You could just do the stone part. You also don't have to make yours interactive. I'm making mine the way I am so that figures can go inside and fire from cover and shit like that. You know what's funny is I still haven't played the new edition of War Machine. Mostly because it fucked my list right in the ass, but... I'll get there eventually. If anybody who works at uh, Privateer Press is watching, thank you. I use Alistair Kane, assholes. Leg only on Legacy. Fuck you. Oh, but we gave Signor a whole new army. Fuck you. Make everything playable with everything again. Jesus Christ, not all of us can buy an entirely new army just because you wanted to be cute. If you guys would quit making counterintuitive choices with the game people would still play it now it's almost impossible to find a game with somebody and I guess at this point I'm mostly just collecting uh, but here we are we're putting a coat of brown on all the wood And even though I've got a lot of gaps between the planks, I'm getting a little overbrush. Yeah, there's a few spots where brown's going onto the brickwork from behind. But mostly that's spots where nobody's going to really see. And from two or three feet away on the game table, those details aren't really going to be that noticeable. So, if you're like me, and you're really, really anal, be careful, but you can do this step relatively easily. Ran out of brown. Don't run out of brown. By the way, apple barrel. You can get it at Walmart. This is like $3 for this giant ass fucking thing of nutmeg brown. It works for wood. It works for dirt. It's a good paint. Apple Barrel makes great paint. It's cheap as shit and you could use it on most of your terrain projects. Hell, I use it on actual miniatures. And if you've seen some of my miniature showcases where I show off my minis, yeah, 
lot of that brown is just nutmeg brown applied with a better brush and a lot more patience so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna apply a quick coat of brown and all I'm really worried about is that blue and the fucking textured color from the fucking pizza box I used for the wood planks doesn't show. I'm going to dirty this up with weathering because why would it look dilapidated and brand new at the same time? It wouldn't. It's a weird juxtaposition you only encounter when making terrain. Or if you work in Hollywood and beat up new cars for movies. Fucking is what it is. Well, I'm going to get this coat of brown on here. And I'll come back at you in a minute. Alright, so I've got it all painted up, two coats of, on the wood and the dirt. Now, take care of that star. I'm going to get just a brush and grab my folk art antique copper. I'm going to start painting up the star. I love the full cart paint. It covers nicely. It's a really good metallic. And I love antique copper. I, I, I don't know how many times I can say I love antique copper. You just want to be very careful when you're doing your symbol. Whatever symbol you choose, you could you could put a little cross on here, you could put a star, you could put Fuck, you could literally put anything. Um Fucking skull, whatever. Whatever really floats your boat. Ah.
And obviously I'm going to make more than one coat, but uh, there we go. Let's get it started. So I'll come at it for a few more steps and we'll see where it goes. All right, time to wash this up, but good. So I've got some homemade wash. Gotta get some of the suds off the top. Get down into the wash. And then just lather it on. And it came out too dark. So adding water bit of water just get it moving flowing again there we go this thinner wash much better We just want to soak this thing in wash, get it just flowing everywhere so that it gets into the recesses. weather it up we can you know, put it on its side and just fucking soak the bejesus out of it now I don't use homemade wash on minis like actual characters or monsters or anything like that and I don't for a reason. Homemade wash does not flow as good as the the pro made fucking acrylic washes that you get from like Games Workshop or fucking Army Painter. And no amount of like I, I've seen lots of people be like it's just as good. No, it's not. You know, I, I'm sorry, I'll take Nolan Oil over my homemade wash for a mini any day. We 
We're just gonna soak the inside of this thing. Just absolutely soak it. And the reason I'm doing that is just because it's easier to do the inside first. We want this to just get really wet and let it run on in. It'll leave a somewhat streaky finish in some places, but for the most part, it will darken the recesses and really flow into the backdrop, really making an effective look for this thing. Now, you want to drop cloth when you're doing your washes because check this out. And I fucking mean this. This shit will make a mess. And you want to use bright colors because your wash will darken up your work the moment you go to weather it. So if you want your hard work to really matter for shit. I, if you're gonna go all one color, I'd go with a very light gray. Well, not a very light gray, but a light gray. And a little extra water never hurts. Just run it along the top. There we go. And this thing is going to get soaking wet. I am just going to town with this wash. I made a shitload of it because, you know, I'm planning to make a whole bunch of terrain, at least for the summer. Let my craft crafting bug out and just really fucking paint some minis, paint some models, build some terrain. I've got I've got plans for this summer. And we are going to video all of it. Oh yeah. And it will be impressive. No, it probably won't. But the way this looks and what you're going to get out of it is as much as you put into it. I want something that's going to look ancient. So I'm going to put in the time to weather it to look ancient. Now I'm not using brown as a wash, and I'll tell you why. I already have a lot of brown earth tones in my stonework. And just a little extra water to help it flow. Just never forget that with homemade wash, Sometimes you got to help it along just a bit. And you want to get rid of any bubbles that are from the dish soap. 
So if you see any bubbles, just hit those with the brush and pop them. Until it's flowing right, and you can pick it back up with the brush and drop it at the top. Now, honestly, this will take a few days to dry. Maybe. I don't know. I will... Uh, at the very least, it'll probably take the rest of today to dry. We don't want it to pool on here. So a little bit of water to help it flow. It that is the wash and we'll come back and take a look at it once it's dry. Okay, so uh, the wash is for the most part dried. I gotta wipe off the bottom a bit. And dry my drop cloth again a bit. Now it'll dry better. But as you can see, the weathering's not done yet. Copper oxidizes. It doesn't do so with rust. Instead, it gets a tealish green color that goes on it. So we're just going to brush on a bit of this teal, this greeny teal. I'm using a paint by Apple Barrel called Key, uh, Key West. And a very small brush, and I'm just dabbing it along the edges like an edge highlight. On all the down facing edges. And getting it on some surface areas. to kind of simulate that aging.
And then we'll get a little water and we'll streak it. Blend out those light edges. And what we're left with is that. Looking much better. And now to get it to dry on the base a bit better, I'm going to leave it upside down for a little while. And we'll come back to it. So, as you can see, I'm adding flocking to it. You have no gonorrhea, no chlamydia. And... Hey, it's Chance. I'm sorry I didn't really film very much of the last portion of this project, but uh, here it is. Uh, other things were going on when I tried to record the flocking. But this is it completed, and we'll get some beauties of it in a second. <sighs> Thanks for sitting with me while I make this project a reality. And from all of us to all of you, Keep adventuring. Dun dun da da dun 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 da da dun 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 dun